In this video, we're going to cover the idea of exposures in DBT and understand what they are used for and why they're important. And at a high level, exposures make it possible to define and describe a downstream use of your DBT project. Because generally speaking, we're not creating these DBT projects just for fun. There's usually something else that it's being fed into. So for example, a dashboard application, maybe a data science or machine learning pipeline. And the whole goal here is by creating what we call an exposure, we can kind of bridge the gap between those two concepts. So you can do things like run, test, list resource, do all these different DBT commands and make use of it for everything that feeds into the exposure. It's also going to allow you to have specific documentation related to that exposure. So in this video, we're going to dig a little bit more into what an exposure is and then show you how to actually build one in your own project. Ultimately, it's a YAML file. It's not another model. It's just a YAML file with configuration where you can indicate what it's based on. So what it depends on, the type of exposure that it is. And again, when we say exposure, we're saying these different external uses of the project, along with some other information like the owner, uh, some description, maybe a URL to find it. And this is mainly for two things. You're going to see it in the documentation and you can run commands with a selector based on this exposure. If we look at the properties, the three that are required are the name it must be unique amongst exposures and you must use snake case. And then the type, there are one, two, three, four, five types at the time of this recording. And you must select one of these. And the reason you have to pick one of these and not just create your own is because it's used to be organized in the doc site that we'll see shortly. And then the owner and then expected here is depends on, and this is refable as they're saying nodes, and that would be a ref or a source, kind of like the Jinja we see in our models. This allows you to select everything that it depends on. It kind of connects everything together. And with that said, it also makes the lineage clear in terms of what's used before it. And then everything else is optional. But if you can add it, I think it's helpful to do it. First, we'll go over to develop and create a new branch. I'll call this add exposures. And like I said before, these are YAML files and we can put them within our models directory here, and you can put them within Marts. Maybe you make your own separate directory called exposures. This part is really up to you and kind of how it works with the rest of your design. For this scenario, I'm gonna say, let's create a new folder called exposures just to keep it separate. And within here, I'm going to create a new exposure. And this is going to be, again, a YAML file. So let's say in this scenario, we have a dashboard that we use. Maybe it's in Tableau, Power BI, Looker, it doesn't matter but it's a customer performance dashboard and one that's widely used in the company. So I'm going to create an exposure called customer performance dashboard.yaml. And let's go ahead and open this up. And within here is where we will create this exposure right here. And we can see this is similar to a lot of other YAML files here where the main key determines what we're looking at. And in this case, it's exposure. So I'm going to copy this part right here, version two, exposures and I'm going to do side by side actually just to keep this together. All right. So now we'll go in two spaces and we need to give it a name and I'm going to keep the name the same as the file name. So customer performance dashboard. That's the name of the exposure. We need to indicate type in this case, dashboard. Remember it could be uh, analysis, notebook, ML application, whatever it is. Let's put a description. I'm not going to put maturity or URL because I don't have any of that, but we'll put a description and I'm just going to copy and paste some notes that I have for sake of time. Next, we want to add some more information. And in this case, we'll say depends on so that we can connect it with the rest of our DAG and it will work similar to a lot of other functions in DBT depends on, and this will be a list of refable nodes. Again, remember that's models or sources. And this is again, just like we would do it in a query. Lastly, we'll put an owner. All right. So now we have this here. What do we do with this? Well, like I mentioned, most of this is for documentation purposes. So if we go dbt docs generate and generate our new documentation, depends on a score named text store customers, which was not bound. I think that is because it is singular. Let me double check is customer single singular. So that is why that fails. So I'll do customer save. And I also want to just be safe, do a dbt depths to make sure that we have our packages installed because sometimes that'll cause an error. 
if you haven't added that. All right, now we will do dbt docs generate. And because we're on dbt cloud, we'll be able to just take a look at that preview with this guy right here. Now we can view docs right here. Now, if you look to the left over here, we have this section called exposures. And here's why it's important to indicate the type because under dashboard, this is now grouped. Whereas if we had analysis or application, the other ones would be grouped. And this is where we can see it has a description, the things it's dependent on and everything else that goes along with it. And now it works just like anything else. And if we look at our lineage graph, we can see everything that factors into this exposure. And you can see that this is doing a selection based on the plus sign. And you could do a DBT build or a DBT run using this same command. And these are all of the items that would run before it. So that's another use case of the exposure. Now let's create one more just to show kind of the different buckets here. I'm going to create one more and I'm going to call this one order analysis .yaml. But this time it's going to be an analysis just to show you. And for sake of time, I'm going to copy and paste. This time the type is analysis instead of dashboard. And we have some refs and myself as the owner. Otherwise it's all the same. So let's now do another dbt docs generate to see this in action. And now again, over here, we can see there's two sections now. So we have analysis and we have dashboard and all of this now is working together again through this one project. And it's just another great feature of dbt to keep things together, to keep yourself organized and kind of act as a hub for your entire data platform. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of how exposures work and you can think about different ways to use this on your project.